Are you a professional arm wrestler? I began with arm wrestling when I was 17 years old. Since then, arm wrestling is my life. When I finished school, when I was 19. Since then, actually, arm wrestling is all I do. I just eat, eat sleep, and train. And okay. Give my best and try to develop all the time. Okay. The arm wrestling is all for you? Yes. Okay. And I want it to be all in, in the future also. Just to be a competitor and trainer. Okay. In your country, so it's Bulgaria? Yes. Yes. This is a sport who is very famous. Oh, well, I wouldn't say. Not so famous, actually. Not so famous? Yeah. Uh, how long 
did it take for you to be famous in Bulgaria? Uh, actually, when I started 2005, they were showing Bulgarian arm wrestling a lot more on the TV than now. There was Bulgarian professional arm wrestling league and they were showing it all the time on the TV. After that they stopped, 2009 or 2010 they stopped with the professional league and now they show it less. Uh, I started to pull in that league 2006. 2006, 2007, until 2009 I was pulling there and uh, then I had more recognition in the nation. Right now, less people don't know about arm wrestling, unfortunately. Uh, we have more champions now, but the recognition is less. It's all about the medias. If they show arm wrestling on the TVs a lot, it gets recognition. Yeah. Right. What about the training? Did your training uh, change since your beginning? Yeah. During uh, the different periods of my career, yes. my training was also different. The first uh, five, six years I was training a lot more in the gym okay. and place on the table. After that, 2011, I totally changed my trainings and I started to prepare only on the table. Until last year, I was focusing on the table. Almost only table. Okay. Very rare. I was lifting uh, weights, um, but the thing is that with that system, you have a lot of progress when you you have opponent a little bit stronger than you. When you have somebody a little bit stronger, you try to beat him all the time and you develop. Yes. But if you don't have such a partner, the progress is less. And uh, from about five months already, I lift weights now again and uh, I think that I have some progress now so okay, we'll yeah. see how we'll go during the during the year we'll see okay with partner uh, even if they are weaker than you maybe it's possible to train with elastic band to get for the side pressure yeah of course it's possible and even I, I like very much the two hands training yes but your opponent should be very careful and uh, you should know what to do exactly, how to beat you very slowly. And uh, actually, it's great training. It's great training with two hands also. But just your opponent should be good competitor also. Okay. And maybe this is good for side pressure or deceptions, but less for the end. Well, you can focus on every aspect when your opponent with, is with two hands. Just he should catch him in different places. But it's possible to train all your areas also. Okay. Okay. Uh, during your trainings, do you have some periods? One period with uh, light weight, one period with heavy weights? I just train heavy all the time. Just before the competition, one, two weeks, I do just light training and after the competition depends how I feel how sore I am but I start with heavy trainings if I feel good so no no cycles for me in the year. So for you you are of the school of heavy weights, lower repetitions yes. and not higher range right? No. Okay. Okay. Just and heavy weights. for your ligament and tendon uh, did you did you work heavy too? As, yes. if, as if it was your muscle. I lift heavy in every exercise. If it hurts, then it's possible to increase a little bit the repetitions, but no more than 5-6. Okay, for your 5-6 is a long set? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I usually just go maximum. Maximum or 1-2. One, 1-2 two, three one, two maximum. Left tank, okay. If it's more than 3 repetitions, it's more for endurance. Okay, fine. Okay. If you want your to increase your strength, you should just go maximum. And one, two, and three every maximum. Exercise. <laughs> yes. Side with ligaments or yes. curl or yes. pull up every yes. time. Yes. Okay. How many times per week do you train? I train almost every day, two, three times per day. This is my profession. I'm professional, yes, yes. So I just I understand. train every day. You think that for a, pers um, a person who is not professional, uh, it's okay to make heavy every day. 
Oh, just two, three times a week. Depends how beginner he is, actually. Uh, if there is pain, you should be very careful. But if there is no pain, you can lift heavy. Yeah. And for uh, trainings with uh, uh, heavy weights in static, uh, what time do you uh, do you resist with uh, static charges? Um, I haven't done statics with weights actually. The last several years when I was training uh, mostly on the table, I was just going and my opponent with two hands was taking my wrist or bitching him aside. It's negative rep. And he let me and in two three seconds he beat me. Just static, um, I'm not so experienced with the static actually. Right now when I'm pulling weights, uh, I don't do statics. I just go repetitions maximum or one two repetitions okay uh, do you train with a uh, bench press or deadlift no. never i just do four or five exercises from the table that's all okay four or five it's better to do uh, top roll hook side back pressure on the same mm -hmm. or one day each I, I believe that if you want to be great armor story you should concentrate on one move and just to be strong enough. For example, if you're a top rower, you should concentrate against two types of pullers, against top rowers and against hook pullers. Yes. So if you, your opponent will top row you, you should have very strong wrist and uh, back pressure. If your opponent will hook you, then you should need you need strong rotation and strong side and back pressure. Yes. If you're a hook puller and you pull against top rower, then you need very strong wrist and pushing. If you're a hook puller and your opponent is also a hook puller, then you need strong side and strong rotation. Okay, so in one session, uh, do you mix this kind of side? Yes, like half, side pressure and uh, back? I train half training for top rowers and half training for hook pullers. On the same session? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your uh, memorable uh, matches? Uh, the most memorable matches? Yeah, yes. the most memorable. Well, when I beat Atacino Lilith in Brazil, Brazil, that was the best feeling that I had because he beat me in 2008 for the first time and since then I wanted to beat him. That's about three years, almost four years. I was chasing him and wanted to beat him, so that was my best feeling when I won in Brazil. And after that, of course, uh, the match with Brzezinski in Turkey, 2013. Okay. And uh, which one the the most difficult? Mm. The most difficult of your yeah. career with Arsene in Brazil. That was my hardest match. When we were holding on the table, I was feeling so bad. I mean, I I was feeling that it's just you, he needs a little bit more and he'll beat me. And I was thinking I will cry here on the table, but I will not. This, I will not let this gold medal. <laughs> okay. For finish, what did you what did you think about the vendetta against Henry Pradin? The feeling. Uh, so, I I was expecting the game. Uh, to, I was expecting him to go inside. And the first match, I top rolled him. It was great. I was thinking, okay, I will. With him. The second match when he hooked me, in the first several seconds of the match, I was thinking, hmm, should I let this match or should I continue pulling? Because I was not sure who would get more tired, me or him. Yes. But I said, okay, I will pull and we'll see what will happen. And uh, hopefully he, he got more tired than me yes. after the second match and I was able to, to pro him after that. Okay, but uh, it was very good match and very very close. Okay. I'm happy to win that I won. Okay, great. it was good to have you in France, and maybe we'll see you later. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe Nice and Monaco were great. So yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Patrice. Welcome. It's okay. Bon alors, Emric. Il est trop petit. Ben voilà, compte rendu de cette grande étape, ton feeling. Eh ben écoute, euh, il est plus fort. Je dirais pas qu'il est plus fort, il est meilleur. Il a été meilleur que moi. Euh, j'étais prêt, dans le sens où j'avais pas de douleur. Euh, musculairement, ça allait. Euh, j'étais fort. Ouais. Euh, après, je reviens de blessure d'épaule. Euh, moi, j'ai pas d'excuses. Hein. Ça, tout allait bien. C'est juste que 
euh, ben, je récupère mon épaule et j'ai plus la même, les mêmes sensations que j'avais avant et j'ai pas d'explosivité de, au start. Il m'a surtout gêné sur le, sur le, le start et son explosivité. Ouais. Euh, mais bon après, moi je suis content, j'ai pas eu de douleur. Tu as fait quand même un beau deuxième round Voilà. Oui, Alors oui. là, ouais, exactement. Oh, là, là, en fait, disons, bah, t'es déçu, tu perds, t'es déçu. Mais je suis quand même content parce que bon, voilà, il s'est écrasé, il n'y a pas besoin de le présenter. Euh, je suis revenu d'un très gros match et je l'ai battu. Euh, voilà, je pense qu'il n'y a pas beaucoup de monde qui le bat euh, en revenant de 2 cm du pad. Je fais un bon start, mais pareil, je me connecte très loin, tu vois, j'arrive vraiment à recruter, ça met du temps. Et je l'arrête, et là on fait un bon match. Et après les autres, euh, les autres euh, disons que j'étais moins là. J'avais perdu plus de plume que lui. Voilà, ouais, exactement, ouais. j'avais déjà, parce que bah, la, la condition physique fait que, en plus en discutant avec lui, il pensait, il ne savait pas lui aussi, parce que lui aussi a perdu des plumes, il, il était... Il était inquiet au troisième, ah oui. non, moi aussi forcément, mais il était inquiet pour savoir qui c'est qui a, qui a laissé le plus de jus. Euh, c'est toujours la question, mais de match. moi, grosso modo, même sans qu'il me le dise, je savais que c'était moi qui avait laissé le plus, entre guillemets, parce qu'il a, a une meilleure condition que moi, donc il peut enchaîner. Et après, on l'a vu après pendant les entraînements, derrière, quand on a tourné à la table. Ah, il a tourné pendant deux heures Voilà, il a tourné pendant deux heures. Moi, j'ai fait trois matchs derrière, et puis c'était fini. Non, 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 donc, euh, un peu, je me suis un peu surestimé, mais euh, j'étais un peu poussé par l'événement. Mmh. Il fallait qu'il bah, il fallait qu y ait un Français qui le fasse. Et puis il fallait une vendetta, il fallait, il fallait des noms. Moi, si, si j'avais eu le choix vraiment, je dit, euh, j'aimerais bien attendre un peu plus ouais. pour être mieux, mieux préparé. Euh, bon, je suis assez, assez confiant sur le, sur le futur. Si, euh, si tout se passe bien, que je récupère comme il faut et surtout l'explosivité, je dis cette, euh, cet axe-là, vraiment épaule, épaule poignée sur le haut. En fait, mmh. vraiment, ici, en haut, je ne suis pas du tout confortable. Je joue très bas. D'accord Comme ça. Là, mon biceps est très fort, la, la main est forte. Ici aussi, mais dès que je reste en haut, le poignet, en fait, comme ici, c'est pas stable, même mes doigts ne deviennent pas forts. D'accord, normalement, c'est quand même un des points forts. Et euh, on l'a vu, dès que je tire un peu, on sent que mon poignet part. Et c'est pas normal. Ok. C'est comme ça, c'est comme ça. Hein. Après, à la prochaine, c'est pas. Krasik, c'est Krasik, c'est hein. le numéro mondial. Donc, bon, écoute, on refera quelque chose, on verra. Je suis deuxième. <rire> ah, ça marche pas comme ça, mais c'est pas bien. Merci, Eric. Merci, Eric.